All right, I have 415. I'm going to call the meeting to order. If you would have joined me with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Sam Martin? Here. Bob Freeman? I think so. <laughs> Rick Morgan, yes. All right, we're going to do a short public input so that you don't have to sit through all of our business. I know we have a scout here, an Eagle Scout candidate, am I correct? Yes. What can we do for you? I'm interested in... I'm interested in completing a project at the Beach Mill property. Why don't you stand right up and tell us your name and speak right up. Hi, I'm Bryce Northup. I'd be interested in completing a project, constructing a trail at the Beach River Mill property that goes out to the historic planer that's out there and the remains of the mill itself, the sluiceway and the support for the old wheel and the remnants of the dam. Okay. And I'm looking for the town's approval to build the trail there. Okay. And you're doing you're doing this as part of your Eagle Scout project? Yes. Good. Uh, congratulations, by the way, on making it this far. It's not something that's easily done. Um, and I will tell you that tentatively, I don't think that you will find any opposition whatsoever. Um, we will gladly give you a letter of our support. It is a piece of town-owned property. We do have to involve the Conservation Commission because it is, while the town owns the land, it is managed by the Conservation Commission. So um, I would be more than amazed if they were opposed to it. He needs it before. Though. And I understand that. That's why I think we can, if it's all right with you, we can cut a letter um, supporting it, which was what he needs time-wise, right? And then we can get the Conservation Commission involved. And I, again, I anticipate, I can't imagine that there would be any opposition, so. Do you have some paperwork or something that you put together? Yeah, I have a form to get signed. Good. Can we see it? Sure. Do you have a layout or plans of what you plan to do? Yep, I have two copies if you'd like one. Thanks. So here's some information from the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And then you're welcome to keep this copy if you'd like. And could you sign this copy for me? Just here? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we sign the form authorizing him to proceed with his Eagle Scout project at the Beach River Mill Park. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. It's a great honor. Yes. Oh. There's a... Yep. There you go, sir. Okay. Can I have your contact information as the project? Sure. What's the post office box here at Canal? Sixty-seven. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, if you, when is the next conservation commission meeting? Joseph. Um, next May. May. Uh, May is the uh, tenth. Um, we are having a workshop on. Uh, we're having a workshop on Wednesday. This um, coming Wednesday. This coming Wednesday. Okay. But we're not voting or anything. That's okay. Um, I, because it's because it is 
did you get did you come in in the middle of this i'm sorry i was looking down signing yeah i came in the, yeah okay this this young gentleman wants to do a trail system down at beach river mill as part of his eagle shop okay yeah. um <laughs> because of this town owned property we have the authority and we have granted him that Absolutely. obviously because it's managed by the conservation commission we want you folks involved um and where it doesn't require a vote if it's okay with you it would be nice maybe to have him come in wednesday night and show the commission it is what it is he plans to do Oh, that's fine. Because it's... Um, yeah, that's that, yeah. So um, if you can plan on going to the Conservation Commission Wednesday, you can't do it Wednesday. No, we need, you actually have the Eagle Board meeting Wednesday, which is why we need to be here tonight. Okay. Um, um, then I guess... I'm joking. I'll talk with them out there and see what they're doing. How's that? How's okay. This? And then, and you know, they, there's a... There's a uh, you can have this copy. And we can make some more if we need them. Um, but make sure get the Conservation Commission a, a, at least apprised of it. And if you'd like to have him come to the main meeting, then give him the date. And cool. Okay. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Thank so you very some, much. Good luck to you. A certain date that you have to get this going? Uh, it just needs to be finished by my 18th birthday, which is three months. Okay. Three months. Oh, okay. Good. All right. Thank you very much. Good luck. Anybody have anything else on the public input before we get started, sir? Yes. Um, I'm here concerning Osby Pride Day, the curbside pickup. Um, I've talked with Craig, I believe it is. I don't think I've met. Yeah. You're Craig. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We spoke on the phone, but not. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so um, OSPE Listens would like to run the table, the registration table, um, to hand out bags, gloves, okay. and so forth. Oh, and I, I, I've been apprised of it. Why don't you just state your, because we're, this is recorded and broadcast. Sure. Uh, if you just state your name and who you represent and, yep. and give them a little thumbnail of what it is you plan on doing. Sure. Uh, Josh Arnold here on behalf of Ospie Listens would like to run the registration table for uh, Ospie Pride Day. So that's like the curbside pickup. I know we've done it before. Um, so it's in conjunction with Valley Pride. It's all across, you know, the region on May 6th um, from 8.30 to, I think it's 11.30 is you can pick up bags and gloves if this is approved here. It's more for a roadside cleanup, am I correct? You got it. Yes. That's what okay. it is. And then volunteers are invited to go um, up to North Conway. I know it's a bit of a trek, but there's a big barbecue there for people or whatever and um, afterwards. So that's that's what I got. Okay. Where, where in North Conway? Um, it is <coughs> at the, I want to say the Hampton Inn. Is that yeah. Is there a Hampton Inn up there? Okay. Then if there is, then it's at the Hampton okay. Inn. <laughs> and that would be at noon, the the barbecue. And, and okay, the roadside pickup, so that everybody's clear, they would come here. Yeah. Uh, they can come here, pick up the bags. Between 8.30 and 11.30, bags okay. and gloves. And clean up a piece of the road, and who's picking the trash up? Yep, so that's the next step I've got to work on. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, in the past, I know... We've had the town pick up bags if we tell them what streets they're on. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's so long as we can coordinate, because this will be a Saturday, correct? Correct. So it would be probably Monday before the town could pick any of the stuff up. And right. we just need to, we need to coordinate all of that. That's all. Okay. Um, I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah. Uh, it has been done in the past. Yeah. Um, and anything and everything that gets picked up off the roads and properly disposed of is a good thing. Right. So... And they've done a great job at it too before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we hope to yep. do it again. Well, okay. we certainly encourage people to get involved and to and to. Yeah. You know, I, I used to do it when my kids were little. Yeah. Um, it is a great opportunity with kids. Exactly. Yeah. To show them firsthand the consequences of people who who live. Right. <laughs> um, I'll I'll never forget. You know, my kids when they were little, little going. Daddy, why do they do this? I remember. I remember um, that. And it, it is a great opportunity. And we, as a family, would do a section of road. Right. And it's a, it's a good opportunity. It's a good lesson. Yeah. Never mind cleaning up the town, which is always a good thing, too. And, you know, a lot of people have already gotten to it kind of thing. But mm -hmm. this day, there'll be, you know, people driving by. They'll see people all over the region doing it with the blue bags. And we're going to do everything we can to encourage people to wear bright, you know, bright colored clothes. And we're going to try to get some reflective uh, vests especially for families and that kind of thing. Yep. Um, and then we're also going to try to do like a, you know, PSA to just remind people to be mindful of people on the sides of the road, you know, okay. picking up trash and everything. So we don't need to use, obviously, the inside, but we're going to be in the parking lot. So I filled out this 
contract for use of facilities just yeah, in case. Do I, I don't think you need it. I don't think it's necessary. It was just. Yep. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll put it in the form of a motion that we allow uh, Osprey Lessons to proceed with their coordination of the roadside trash pickup on May 6th. 6th. I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I just say too, if Josh, if you want to get hold of us at some point, yeah. we'll let you know. We did a few roads today, a highway right. crew did. We'll give you a list of what has been done so you're not you know, you know, tripping, not tripping, but I mean, you know, going over the same ones that have already been done. So. Well, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay. okay. Yep. okay. Right. Super. Thank okay. you. Great. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Anybody else have anything under public input before okay. we go into our regular business? Billy. I'd just like to uh, tell you guys again that we just finished up the motor on the spare truck that Good. we rebuilt and we saved the, the, my guys, saved the town a boatload of money and I'd just like to yep. it, you know, kudos. For absolutely. And to oh, fill in the blanks again for those who may be watching or not familiar, uh, one of the trucks which went down and needed a major um rebuild of yeah. the of the of the entire motor uh that was accomplished in-house and that was predominantly done by uh, scott riley, scott riley and, Coates. and chris Siemens, correct uh no nope. no nope. um, tracy waterhouse tracy waterhouse okay um they did it in-house and literally by doing so saved the town thousands and thousands i mean probably ten in excess of ten thousand oh, dollars yeah. i would expect yeah. um and it, it is very much appreciated and if you would convey on our behalf to those guys that participated in that how much we appreciate it and the taxpayers do too mm -hmm. but it is a good thing great so. great job yeah. yeah okay anything else on the public input before we start the regular business all right first thing we have are the minutes of our select men's meeting which occurred on monday april 17th i make a motion we accept them as printed second any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have the minutes of the Silicon's work session, which occurred on Monday, April 17th. I make a motion we accept them as printed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have the check voucher totals. Excuse me. Payroll for week ending 422 was $41,956.27. It were payroll taxes in the amount of $16,151.21. Accounts payable week ending 415 was $27,922.54 for a total disperse this week of $86,030.02. I make a motion we sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I say this every week, but for those who may not have heard it before, these are simply the voucher totals, batch totals. We do review and initial every uh, bill that comes in. And before we get it, the department head does. It also may seem at times like we're blowing through this folder, but we've all also had an opportunity to read all of this prior to the meeting. So, uh, This is a timber tax warrant uh, <laughs> authorizing our tax collector to collect zero dollars and zero cents. Make a motion we sign it. Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. It's a required piece of paperwork. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I have a memo to the Board of Select Men from Craig Brady, our Recreation Director. Um, on Wednesday, April 19th, Town Administrator and him and he interviewed Brenda Meter and Judith Waldron for the summer councilor positions that are currently opened in the Recreation Department. After the, ap after the application process and interview, I'm confident that both can handle the duties of this position. I recommend hiring of both Brenda and Judith. So that I'm clear, these are temporary, uh, non-union positions in conjunction with running the summer camp program. Anybody have any questions? Nope. Then I'm going to make a motion that uh, Brenda Mita and Judith Waldron are hired uh, for those temporary positions. 
All in favor? Aye. Did I get a second? Yeah, I got a second. All right. Very nice people, both of them. This is a timber tax warrant authorizing the tax collector to collect $30.15 and so make a motion we sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a, just by way of announcement as to whom it may concern, please post and circulate the enclosed workshop announcement to your town officials. Workshop is scheduled for May 18th and could benefit many of the officials working for your town. And it's from the Carroll County Conservation District. PO Box 533 in Conway. I have no, no idea who it is. But it's uh, how to access soils information on the web is the title of the workshop. We have an uh, application for a veterans uh, tax credit. It has been reviewed by our assessor. They meet the requirements. I make a motion we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have the highway department work log, which is here in the folder for anybody to look at if they'd like. We have a copy of a letter from Westcott Law. Uh, it's regarding one of the dilapidated buildings, which is on uh, Danville Road. Um, they have uh, requested of the court additional time for an engineer to look at the property. Doesn't require any action on our part. It's here for information purposes. <coughs> we have a copy of a check in the amount that we received from Northeast Resources, part of the recycling program, in the amount of $3,405.11. Uh, and that came from mixed bale and scrap metal. We have an excavation tax warrant authorizing our tax collector to collect $13,091.02. Make a motion, we sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have another excavation tax warrant to collect zero dollars and zero cents and make a motion we sign it. All in favor? Aye. Another excavation tax warrant to collect one hundred and eleven dollars and fourteen cents and make a motion we sign it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is a multi-part, uh, I read it and I'm not completely clear, but it's on a land use change tax, which is to take one acre out that was previously in um, current, use. current use. I'm gonna make a motion that we do that. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the second part is to well, that's two signatures on that part. And then there is also attached a warrant authorizing the tax collector to collect two thousand five hundred and thirty dollars as a result of that change. Make a motion we sign. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then there's a cover letter from the assessor explaining all of it. But, um, is, is, is Joe Deegan still here? Yeah, he's okay. I'm gonna, all right, I'm going to pass over that one for a minute because he's this one. <coughs> uh, this is a request for abatement. Um, Map 16, lot 15, sub 13. Um, it's for a, a 
camper that was put on the site after April 1st, 2016, and therefore should not be taxed for 2016. Results in a refund or abatement of $160. I make a motion we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a contract for use of facilities from the Cal Ripken Baseball. Using the, to use the Y field. Schedule's been okayed by Craig. I make a motion we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a timber tax warrant for the town authorizing the tax collector to collect $1,060.42. Make a motion we sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a letter from Kingswood Regional High School regarding the scholarship committee uh, for Life at Merrill Scholarship addressed to the select men. Um, Bob has been our the select men's uh, liaison, if you will, on the issue of the scholarships, and I'm going to make a motion that Bob will continue to represent the board of select men in that regard. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I'm going to give that to you. Uh, Connie, you still involved with that and helping and meeting and making yep. sure that we meet that time, time frames, etc. Okay. What's the deadline on the call? When's the deadline? Um, or when's the award deadline? Uh, um, the award ceremony is J June 8th at 6 p.m. I guess we need to make this is a letter from the Office of Select Men Town of Moultonboro. Addressed to us, and they're doing a surplus sale of PTR baler and compactors. Is this something you're familiar with? I haven't heard about that. Yet. Okay. Well, it's it's at the town of Moulton Bros accepting bids for four vertical PTR balers and compactors. So we'll make sure you get a if it's something that we're trying to use or otherwise. We have a letter from Charter Communications. Um, and this is a franchise fee that we get. Uh, from and this covers from October 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2016, and we received a check in the amount of $6,472.46. Before we move on from this, have we heard anything back from them on renegotiating? Uh, they sent over the boilerplate agreement to renew the franchise. There weren't many changes made to it. It was just updated terminology. There was a couple of companies out there that we were researching to see if they wanted to help us with the, the franchise. But, but, but we made a, we decided back, was it last last summer, we had to we had to notify them by a certain date that we wanted to renegotiate. Yeah. We did that. We did do that. Um, and we've not heard anything so back from them. So the contract expires this August. Okay. And we have to negotiate a new contract with them. It wouldn't automatically renew. That's what we had to stop last year. Mm -hmm. We had to give them one year notice. So okay. we have to start the Okay, because the, the main reason that I certainly supported that is, and I would like to see a meeting set up with somebody from there, mm -hmm. um, and something you could work on, because one of the things that I would like to see is the expanded coverage. Um, there are roads in town that do not currently have cable, but there's not really a heck of a lot of reason why they don't. Um, I have always believed that the Board of Select Men, back when this all started, missed a tremendous opportunity and could have and should have required that it be on every road. Um, but it's something that I'd still like to try to pursue. So if you could reach out to them and find out what their, what their thoughts are on getting a meeting set up. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a copy of a notice of a public hearing. The following public hearing has been scheduled for May 9th at the Osprey Freight House at 7 p.m. In accordance with the Hampshire Revised Statutes Annotated 676 colon 7, 
the town of Osby is required to notify all abutters to land intended for special exception slash variant slash administrative appeal slash motion for rehearing be notified of the proposal. You as an abutter are hereby notified that Carroll County Superior Court issued a court order for a motion to remand to the OSPE Zoning Board of Adjustment to hold a public hearing on the case listed below. Uh, Town of Freedom, Board of Selectmen per RSA 677-2 previously filed a motion for rehearing from the OSPE ZBA's denial decision of 10-8-2016 for administrative appeal of the Planning Board's approval decision of case number 16-3-SPR, Northgate Osby LLC for Westwood Shores Campground and Resort, site plan review on September 20, 2016. Connie, do you have any earthly idea what that means? I, I know what it's all Okay. Um, what it is is they, they, the judge uh, um, told us that we had to hear Freedom again because we don't because not we because they didn't let everybody speak. Who didn't let everybody speak? We, um, the ZBA. Yeah. Uh, Zoning board of the government. Edward's name. Um, chairman there. What's his name? Stanley, Stanley Brothers. Brothers. Stanley Sorry, Stanley. Brothers. Stanley Brothers. Um, um, shut it down to public input, and you can't do that. So yeah. they ordered us to have another meeting with them, and they all have to speak. Right, well, the judge said that we did not let him speak and we have to let him speak. The law says we have to let him speak. At, the, at that <laughs> hearing, there was no one that represented freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they said there was and that they, they weren't able to speak. So okay. we're going to rehaul it. They're going to speak and the outcome is probably going to be the same. Okay. Uh, we have a copy of a bill of sale. Um, this is part of the completion of the uh, cleanup of a non-permitted property at Nine Doors Corner Road. The town of Osby bought a 1980 green and white 30-foot Fleetwood camper for one dollar and they have properly disposed of it. We have a copy of the uh, Executive Council Consent Calendar Agenda, which is here in the folder for anybody to use or see. Uh, Joe, I'm glad you're here because there is a there is an abatement in here which concerns you, and I'm confused. Okay. Um, I mean, it says the taxpayer repealed the 2016 assessed value. He is suggesting the billboards on this site should be listed as 3, 12 by 41, not 6, 12 by 20 signs. Additionally, he is requesting a more precise depreciation based on a 25-year life expectancy. Um, our assessor is recommending that we grant the abatement. He says it makes sense to adjust the older units by minus 25% to account for the remaining life. Additionally, it also makes sense to assess each unit as three 12 by 41 signs. The resulting value change should be abated. You will note that when this is done, the revised value is very close to the taxpayer's suggested value. Now, he suggested an adjustment of $24,500 and a refund or abatement of 512 My concern and where I was confused. Go ahead. I know exactly what you're talking about the 12 by 41 signs that you're confused about, correct? Yes. Okay. We don't have three 12 by 41 signs. We have one 12 by 41, and then we have two, uh, two remaining structures that total 12 by 40. Because the way the, way the signs, my signs in particular, were being, being assessed is per face, not per structure. And according to um, assessing rules, it's supposed to be assessed per structure. So each structure has a 12 foot by, each face on each structure has a 12 by 20 face. So the total of each structure face is 12 by 40. Because you can't take, because I was being assessed for each sign. 
So okay. for five faces total on that property. Okay. But I should be being assessed for three structures worth of sign face. Okay. And I'm okay with that. But what what gate what what caused my antennae to go up? Yeah, was, was thinking about individual signs. I am because yeah. I did not want, and I know. Listen, the sign ordinance is something that we agree on that needs to be revisited, and we're yeah, in the yeah. process of trying yeah, to do yeah. that. But we had denied you combining Correct. a couple of these and signs, and they yeah. have not been. No. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to now sign a document which that's, appears that we are okay with combining them, and then have you say that's not. And then have you say, well, they assess them as one sign, so therefore no. it is one sign. I'm not. No, I don't. I, hold. I, I'm not suggesting you yeah. do, but this is going to be. 20 years from now, when you've sold those signs and we're no longer sitting yeah. here, I just want to make sure that it's no. clean and clear. If I can ever make those the way I would like to get them, <laughs> I'd like to do that. But no, I'm not. I, and it, it, it shouldn't say 12 by 41. If anything, with this assessing, I made you more money. Oh, I'm not. Uh, not, I, not, not on my piece, yeah. on the other pieces. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm not. Believe me, I got, well, I could, should tell you some stories about what's going on over there. But, um,. But no, what, what it is, is he would, it, I was being charged major money, which I shouldn't be, and then my lighting, I was being charged $1,500 per fixture. The highest price in town is $450 okay. per fixture. Right. Uh, and, <laughs> and again, I'm not, and I'm, just in lighting fixtures. believe me, I'm not suggesting that yeah. this was anything nefarious on your part, nor yeah. do I suggest that you would. I'm simply saying again that years oh, from no, now, when neither one of us are involved, I knew exactly where your mind was going. Neither no, one of us are involved. And, and, and the other thing, the other thing that I brought me to this, I should have noticed it three years ago, but I didn't. Not everybody pulls their cards all the time. Yes. Is that the larger sign you have, the less you pay. The smaller sign you have, the more you pay. Does it make sense? No, absolutely not. Try that one more time. <laughs> larger, I just, you just, you just, the larger, the yeah, me and your Are you talking about the assessing rules now? The, yeah. Okay. The way they're being done. The smaller the sign you have, the larger assessing you pay. Is that on a per, per square foot? Yeah. Okay. The larger the sign you have, the less you pay. It doesn't sound right. So the people that have the smaller signs are being well overcharged. It's 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 being treated like a building. Well, for some reason, and I don't understand why well, you don't want to charge less on a building anyway, because it costs. I'm being told because it costs less to build. But well, in this case, and and what defines a structure? I mean, the same in the same regard, a fence, a fence, right, is a structure, and right. the same in its tax at the same rate as if it were a building, which yeah. never has made any sense to me. Although I guess it's got to be right. some sort of a standard set. Yeah. What concerns me, and, and Ellen, if maybe you can get some clarification from Todd. I mean, what he just said concerns me in the sense that there is a per square footage assessment. It would seem to me that by square foot ought to be somewhat universal, irregardless of size. Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but a 10 square foot sign theoretically costs twice as much to build as a 5 square foot sign. <laughs> I mean, oh. yes and no. I mean, because once you have, let's use the pole signs, once you have those poles in place, you're just really paying for materials. And materials and labor at that point. It's not, I don't know. I mean, I No, but when you say, I mean, as far I mean, as when you're like, setting value. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So you would think a larger sign would be worth more for all intents and purposes because you can charge more for a larger sign. I mean, believe me, when I was doing this whole thing and working with him and trying to show him what other, I mean, uh, North, Carolina, North Carolina has actual defined rules of how you do signs because when you're looking up things about signs, signs, are, you're supposed to uh, get a hold of your lawyer and um, different other people to come up with a way to assess billboards because it is such a weird world in the way that it operates. Mm -hmm. um, so I showed him that, and actually looking at his rates, it actually sort of works out pretty much close to the way he was doing it, but the way it's being done here is very difficult to grasp, but if you, but there's a much easier way to do it, and you ultimately come out to roughly the same numbers. Um, so I, I have no problem with... That made sense or whatever, yeah. but it, believe me. <laughs> I have no problem I I whatsoever. You. Well, whatsoever. you were there. You listened to some of the couple of meetings. <laughs> I have no problem whatsoever with the abated values, uh, what the assessor has set for value at all. 
I am going to, I'm going to suggest that we simply have the explanation rewritten to clarify that there are not three. There's three structures. Yes, but that they're structure. not, they're not, that it doesn't combine the signs which are not currently combinable Correct. is all, is all I'm suggesting. Yeah. <laughs> it, but I as far as the value that. goes, I have no issue, I have no issue with that. Yeah. Okay. That concludes the red folder. Oh, so we're all set. We're all good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll we'll, we'll right. actually physically sign off on it next week as yeah. soon as they clean the language. Okay. That's cool. Fine. But, um, all right. We have we'll the <laughs> water and sewer folder here, real quickly. Uh, this is the contract with Dawson's excavation. Um, this is the one that was brought up last week where. Uh, they had, the, it went out to bid, the bid has been awarded to Dawson's, uh, but when the contract came in, it was written out to uh, our uh, water and sewer superintendent. So we had him redo it to make sure it's in the town's name because that's the way it should be. So this is with Dawson's excavation. This is for bid proposal for replacement of 1,200 uh, linear feet of two inch um, water line. And the amount is $53,500, and I make a motion we sign. I'll second. Any further discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is the one that's going under the lake right there. <coughs> Excuse me. We have the payroll reimbursement request from the town back from the water system to the town. The amount of $3,603.80. I make a motion we sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have yeah, the. Are going to stop that, Brett? It's going to be done in conjunction with the bridge work. At, bridge. Yeah, value. Uh, we have the um, summary of the bills paid for the week from the water and sewer department. Uh, it totals $8,556.83. I make a motion to sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, we have reviewed and signed off on all the individual bills. This is a water and sewer warrant authorizing the tax collector to collect $86.27 in water and sewer charges. I make a motion to sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have two abatements. I wish Bo was here and I meant to mention this earlier. Brad, are you familiar with these abatement requests? I'm familiar with what they do, but I'm not familiar with those exact ones right there that you have. Well, both of these are from the same person on uh, 89 Route 16B. They're looking to have abated. Um, well, one is $35.34, and the other one is for $64.79. And the reason for the abatement is it started in December and ended in April. Because of the cold temperatures, we had to let the water run so that the garage wouldn't freeze. And the other one was because of the cold temperatures, we had to run the water so the house pipe from the road would not freeze. Mm, that's not a reason for me. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I, while I empathize, if they had an issue with trying to keep the pipes from freezing, mm -hmm. um, we, we can't have 350 people letting the water run so their pipes don't freeze and then expecting they're not going to pay for the water. We're going to be in a lot of trouble. It, or I suggest maybe we hold off on those till next week there till I get a chance to talk to Bo about that, see if he's had any conversations with those people yep. directly and, you know. The one that concerned me was the one that it talked about, it said because of, the cold, because of the cold temperature, we had to run the water so the house pipes from the road would not freeze. Now, if there has been some sort of an identified problem where the road, where the pipe from the road in freezes and that is the system's fault, and was told to let the water run so it didn't freeze, and I'm okay with that. And that's an understandable thing, but otherwise. Depends which side of that curb stop they're talking about, yeah. But otherwise, uh, it, it concerns me the thought of abating the use of, well, in this case, it's 17,000 gallons of water. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm gonna leave these in the folder. Anybody wanna, and then we'll get some more information. Okay. okay. All right, completes the red folder. 
Uh, old business, anything new on 28-171? I did try to reach out to Michelle Marshall as my contact out there with DOT. Uh, she's been on vacation. She did leave a <coughs> phone number to call to DOT Design. So I tried calling that to see if somebody in the office there might have information if it was going into design for a different type of approach. Um, and as of 4 o'clock when I came up here, they hadn't called me back yet. Okay. So I will pursue that further and hopefully have an answer next week. All right. Very good. I have a legislative update. Please. And it's in regards to the bill that uh, Jeff Bradley put in mm -hmm. and the area rep supported, SB 203, mm -hmm. it was laid on the table. I contacted Jeb Bradley and he told me that he expects to put that, they're gonna have to re remove it from the table. So they have to vote to remove it and then they're gonna put it in the house bill number two, which is the budget. Oh good. As, for a little background, as you know, the house did not pass a budget, mm -hmm. it failed. So the next process is to have it go to the Senate and then the Senate has to work on it. So he's tentatively going to put that amendment to get some funding to do something to the intersection and put it in, in uh, House Bill 2. Okay, and so obviously you guys will keep your eye open on that and I, I certainly would expect that you would be advocating with all you know about what's going on down there. Oh, absolutely. So, super. Good, thank you very much. Uh, anything new on the covered bridge, Brett? Uh, nope, nothing, nothing new on that. Okay. Uh, hazardous and dilapidated buildings we covered. Those are we're in progress. We've got court orders on both of the ones that we sought. Uh, we're working with the owners on making sure that that gets complied with. Uh, Conservation Commission. I think we can take that off. I think we're pretty well yep. set with that. That can come off the agenda for ongoing things. Uh, the cemetery lot. Did we make any? Okay, so we'll leave that on for now. Uh, the Sumner Brook property, there you are know, only a couple of things. We're, we're, uh, we sent the, our code enforcement officer down to, to, take, to do an inspection of the, um, the rental property of the, um, the fish hatchery, for lack of a better term. Uh, we're in a... It's a fairly old process where we're, we are actually, the town of Osby owns the land, we own the house, and then we lease the property through an agreement in conjunction with the Conservation Commission and some very nice young folks have been renting it and running a commercial, um, what do you call it, fish aquaculture, hatchery. fish hatchery, fish business. Um, the problem is that we've had, we had a, a fire down there last winter, uh, which had resulted in us expending some money and making an insurance claim. There was another chimney fire down there a month and a half ago, two months ago. Um, so we've sent the, uh, a code officer down to take a look, and there are some things that absolutely need to be done to this building. Uh, the roof is in need of repair or replacement. Um, there are shingles that are missing in many areas that have been patched. The clapboard siding is in need of repair along with the painting of the entire structure. The paint chips on the ground from the existing paint have tested positive for lead paint. Uh, and I believe they have children down there. Young children. Uh, kitchen and bathrooms need GFI receptacles, inst installation smoke and carbon monoxide, new smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Railing needs to be installed in the basement stairs along with the light. The interior ceiling and living room needs to be sealed and painted, peeling and chipping. The septic has not been pumped or inspected for many years. And then he, of course, gives us a list of suggestions on things that need to be done. Um, long story short, the, the, the building absolutely needs some attention. I do think we need to take a look at the lease and find out what is, if any, um, the leaseor's responsibility. I mean, it would seem to me that maybe painting the ceiling would be something that they would do, but I, I, don't, I don't know that. Or I don't even know if it's required by the lease. So I would like to get that dusted off and take a look at it. Um, I do think that in either way, we need to um, proceed with getting some bid specs together and putting this, and putting this project out to bid. Now, as far as the money to pay for it, um, right, wrong, or indifferent, and I don't know the answer to it, the rent from that property for all these years has been paid into the Conservation Commission Conservation Fund. Uh, a year ago, 
um, when there was the chimney fire, the portion that was not covered by the town's insurance was in fact paid for out of the conservation fund and I think rightly so, that's where the rent goes. So I guess my point is, I think we need to get this out to bid, find out what kind of money it is, and then we need to work on the Conservation Commission on paying for the repairs that need to be made down there. At some point, we need to go back and look at that original agreement. Uh, that The building is owned by the town, it's insured by the town, um, there is a, certainly a cost associated with that, and, I, and I'm not... I'm not at all sure that the rent should be going to the Conservation Commission, but maybe shouldn't be going to the town. But that's a, that's a separate article and a separate a thing altogether that we simply need to look into. But for now, that building down there needs some work. There are some safety issues down there that we've got a, that we've got a young family living in. That, and for however it happens, it doesn't make a difference. We are the landlords. And I feel very strongly that we need to get this stuff addressed. Anybody have anything you want to add? No, I don't. It does need it. I've been down there to see it. It's a, a lot of it's a mess and needs to be fixed, and I think we ought to work on it. Okay. Um, then I'm going to make a motion that we prepare um, bid specifications. Um, and I, Ellen, if you could work with Steve on that, and let's get a, an invitation to bid out, and then we'll have a better idea of exactly what we're talking about for money. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, <laughs> Any other old business? Uh, I got only one thing that I want to cover real quickly under old business, and it's kind of to clarify what I, or expand upon what I said last week. In response to this whole idea of dogs searching people's property for failed septic systems. I had a couple of people who approached me this week who didn't understand what, whatever, the article or what they saw. To try to clarify, if there is reason to believe that somebody has a failed septic system, there is already in place a very defined process on how that's addressed. It involves our town health officer who would contact the homeowner, go do an inspection, and then come up with a plan with the homeowner to get it rectified. In the rare case, and when I say rare, I don't know that it's ever happened, if a landowner refused access to the health officer, then there is a process by which that health officer can go to court and seek a warrant to go on the property. What was being proposed now for the second time is to hire a company who have dogs, who I, listen, I fully understand the capability of dogs, to simply go on people's property to search for problems with their septic system. That is a very different thing. It may be allowable in New Jersey. It may be allowable in Massachusetts. It would not and should not be allowable in New Hampshire. In order to go on somebody's property, um, there are many instances in RSAs and in, in issues of wetland and everything else. They, you have to have landowner permission or you are trespassing. The government cannot go on your property on a whim to investigate anything, and that's as it should be. But for those who are concerned, if they, if they have reason to believe that there is a failed system near them or on it, there is a process by which that's addressed. That process does not involve trespassing. If there are any more questions, I'll gladly try to clarify it again, but I, this is New Hampshire, and we don't trespass on people's property. New business. Be free. No, nope. I don't. Uh, the Eagle Scout project, uh, Mr. Northrop, we've already dealt with. Uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment members, what's that about? Um, Ski is on that board. Well, I forget now. Not he has to somehow. Yeah. Obviously, he's, for medical reasons, he's, he hasn't been in attendance at a lot of the meetings. And he was um, also on the plane. And he's also our joint member that serves on the plane. The, the question has come up at what point does, um, because we're limited with members that are active members on the ZBA right now, at what point can we replace him? Replace. Well, first of all, has anybody talked with him about offering his resignation or otherwise? Okay. 
um, why don't we compile a letter that we could send to him next week? Um, you know, first and foremost, wishing him a speedy recovery, and and then ask him what his intentions are, or if he has an idea of his intentions, because those those seats are very important. But let's let's reach out to him first and see what he wants to do before we propose to take any action. The zoning board has appointed um, the two alternates as members now. Well, the alternates can be elevated to voting status at any point because of an absence. Right. So, and that's true. Yeah, we have one vacancy, and there's a couple of cases that are coming up where I believe Jim Ryan's is going to have to step down. We already have a vacant position on the five-member board, and then with his absence, on the zoning board, we already have a vacant position. Yes. Okay. Uh, David Babson, nobody filled his position. Right. Okay. So. Uh, can we then put out another plea uh, for people who may or may not be interested? We we. Well, not may, may be interested, not may not. Uh, we need uh, somebody to step up and, and join our Zoning Board of Adjustment. It's very important. There are some major projects going on right now that, that need some careful consideration. So let's hope that... We have one open position and two alternates. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, any other new business? Well, you had something, you something. I've got some, I've got some, on the new business, actually, the road ban, the spring road ban has been lifted. Um, the roads are in good shape. They've dried up enough to, to lift that. Um, dog licensing, it is due now. Uh, task collector mentioned to us today that there are still many who have not licensed, and they will be getting a, a friendly but stern reminder coming up. That they, that they have to, or they are subject to a $25 civil fine. So please, if you have a dog and you haven't licensed it, please get it done. Uh, we've also been told by a tax collector that the uh, first half tax bills are due to go out on May 9th. Um, they have a due date of July 3rd. So that's by way of new announcements. Uh, now the that. Second public input. Anybody? Greg? Yeah, I wanted to talk about the new Mendrew mm -hmm. road pro property up there. I went up there and I took some pictures <clears throat> that, you know, the property is not in great condition. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked at the records. I saw the town took it over in uh, October 2nd of 2002. Mm -hmm. Where? And I don't no, know. Mountain Road, West Austin. It's for, for what most people refer to as the Boy Scout property. Yeah. yeah, they refer to it as scout land. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's, it, it needs some loving. Mm -hmm. Like the trail is, the red truck had a hard time getting down there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in the pictures, but you see, you know, little trees coming out of the ground. It's just, in a couple weeks, they'll be fun. And it's, yep. it's pretty difficult to get around. I have a picture of the water access in there. It's, you can't really get to the water from the property. What, what do you, Greg, Craig, what do you, what do you propose to do with the property up there? Are I think good? we clean it up uh, up top, we push back the gate, put it in a parking area, and I'll keep people to hike down there and mm -hmm. enjoy it. Because right now, if you drive past it, I mean, there's no place to park. Yep. So, I mean, it's a park that has no access. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's not serving any value to the community. Okay. Um, it is a beautiful piece of property. Um, when my years and years and years ago, when my son was a scout, we camped there. I can attest to the fact that it has some terribly uneven ground and a whole lot of roots. <laughs> we slept in the pit there, but um, what I might, if, unless there's any opposition, what I might suggest is having Craig work with Brad, um, have him take a look at it, come up with some ideas, um, and maybe if it's something you can fit into your schedule sometime this summer or this fall. Um, yeah, we've looked at it, you know, last year and this year and stuff. Uh, actually, I actually haven't been in there this year yet, but we've had ideas of, you know, going in and just, you know, cutting it back, opening up the entrance road a little bit. Uh, there's a spot in there about two-thirds of the way in where it kind of goes in levels out a little bit. You could put a little parking area for about a half a dozen cars off to the side. Um, and instead of stop the cars there, like Craig said, so that people aren't driving down to the lower section where you Would you move the gate then, Brad, down past that? Um, it could be. I mean, we might want to talk to Jimmy about that too, because even if you move it in that far, it's in there a ways so that people can still go in there and kind of hide in there and stuff. Yeah. That's, you know, it might be something we want to talk to go with Jimmy about and see what, you know, or just get something 
Yep. Yeah, there is potential on top for it. Yep. But about like 20 feet in, there is like a patch of tiny pine trees that you might be able to get a half a dozen cars in there. Okay. We'll just need to be cleared a little bit. Okay. So we look at that, even if you are to not put it in quite so far, too. So yep. some options there. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't, if, why don't we do this? If, unless somebody wants to add something to it. My thought is to, is to coordinate with Brad. Um, I'm certainly all right. I mean, with, with, but I also don't want... I don't want to upset the projects that you've already got going. That I'm not making this a priority. It's been this way for a long time. I agree that it should be, be nice to get it cleaned up so it can be used. Um, and the sooner the better, but at the same time, you know, I leave it to you guys to fit it into your schedule. Um, it doesn't appear, other than the hauling some stuff away, there's not going to be, there's, there's no money here. There's, it, so it shouldn't require any action. It doesn't require a budget. It's just something we can do. Uh, with our own guys at a time when you have a place where you need to keep somebody busy for a couple of days. I would say we should get signs down by the water, you know, swim at your own risk. Mm -hmm. Mark where the property ends on both sides. Okay. Just to make sure that. On both sides on the water axis? Yeah. Okay. Just make sure people aren't straying. Yep. And Brad has a sign supplier, uh, so that's something that I'm certainly. We can work with him on finding what we want to say and yep. put them together. No swimming? No, you can swim, but just it's a swim at your own risk. Not beyond this drop to the water point or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a current, so you, you know, yeah. you get so you need your own you. risk. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. lifeguard on duty type thing. Yeah. It's just so they know they're. Yeah. And it's a they, liability protection. What's yeah. the river? A bear camp? Bear camp. It's yeah. a beautiful spot. Oh, it's a, it's a gorgeous piece of property. Yeah. Where is the recreation department used to do it overnight there during the summer? Yeah. It's hard to describe, but it's on Newman Drew Road in West Ossipi. It's, it's about two thirds. I'm gonna say about two thirds of the way from 16 going north, there, right? and it's on the right. Can you see it though? Yeah. It's, on, it's going in that much? Yeah, yeah. Just, you just wait. As soon as the leaves it's come, it's on the right hand side. There's a gate unless you're right in front of it. Huh. If you're driving past it, yeah. like I drove past it twice. Yeah. Just yeah. going take these pictures. Though. Yeah. When we first put it up, you can see it. It's been up for a while, but it'll be growing in. But it is a beautiful piece of property, and probably is well overdue to have some TLC. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, I don't want this responsibility, so I'll let, you, <laughs> I'll let you select the. Uh, Brad was going to pick it, but then he said he was colorblind, so <laughs> I bailed. Huh? I bailed. He's a chicken. <laughs> this is for. We're talking about the colors for the no orange ball. We're talking about the color for the um, fire engine red. For the uh, gym floor. You don't want to go too dark because it's dark in there. I don't have any problem with the color that it currently is. I like gray. Yeah, it's just, I was going to do the same thing. I don't know why. Is that glacier? Or glacier, yeah. yeah Everybody really picks glacier. Which one's going to be. <laughs> Everybody likes that color. What do you think, Ellen? Are you okay with I like that. I I'll second. You just said it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I agree. I, I, I say get rid of the, the yellowing. Me too. So everybody likes Glacier 122? Yeah. There you go. Glacier 122, write it down. Don't get it? You want the same for in the gym as in if we go the hallway too? Yep. But you want contrast. Nope. I go with purple. Same thing. No. Same thing. Purple. Was that loud enough? Yeah. Same thing. No. Get that away from here. Or she say, or she you end up with a psychedelic bowl. Nice. All right. It'll match um, the trash cans. There is a, by way of announcement, a budget committee meeting, which is on 5-3-2017, 6-30 at the Freight House. Um, they do this every year. It's a, they'll <coughs> review budgets and where we stand. Um, do we, we have one for a tax matter? Okay. Anybody have anything else? Hmm? We have one. I guess so. Um, we have a non-public uh, request under RSA 91A32C, which is a tax matter to meet with our tax collector. Um, call the board, Sam Martin. Yes. Bob Freeman. Yes. And Rick Morgan. Yes. We will be back as soon as we can. <laughs>
Okay, we'll call the public meeting back to order and we'll make a motion that we seal the minutes of the non-public session that we I'll just held. It. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the people's in the interest of transparency, the reason for our meeting with the tax collector was to approve uh, payment arrangements with individuals who are behind on their taxes and are in fact in danger of losing their property. Uh, we've said many times, I'll continue to say, there is nothing that I would rather not do than to take somebody's property. So we do work with the taxpayers. There was a letter sent in last week from a lady who certainly appreciated that and we, we work with anybody to not make that happen in particular on their primary residence. So that's what the purpose of the non-public was. Do you have anything else to come before the meeting? Helen? Were they sealed? Were they sealed. Excuse me? Were they sealed? I just made the motion to seal those minutes. Yes. Anything else? Sam? Nope. No. Well, nope. Mr. Como, anything? I make a motion we adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.